sweet. Welcome to the podcast, endorsed by Liquid Bread. Liquid Bread, when you're half dead and you need to be fed, Liquid Bread. Warning, some podcast owners may contain sawdust. Today's topic, the evolution of superheroism. We've got three people on the panel tonight. The attorney at comics, Just Words, the fan of Steel, and the everyman's everyman, Cast Troy. All right, Seth and o, get the ball rolling and let's start talking. Well, tonight we're we'll going to talk about the evolution of superheroes. Ah, that's great. Now we're going to go on to just words. We're talking about the evolution of superheroes. <laughs> and I'm rudely interrupting Seth. That's right. Simon, take it away. You always talk, Seth. You don't get to do it this time. <laughs> Let me just say that the corniness of that intro was beyond corny. Liquid brain? Yeah, when liquid you're, brain. When you're about to date, liquid brain, that's wait, 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 what's... Wait. Come on, we discussed this in the, in the meeting. Remember our sponsors, Spishat, Liquid Bread, when you're half dead and you need to be fed? Liquid Bread? Oh, liquid said, bread. Sa- we just eat, said, bread. Sa- you just eat it with butter? You, mel- you eat it with melted butter? Seth, you, you were sitting down there in the meeting, in the skyscraper, on the space station just yesterday. They signed the deal. You said you'd wear a dress. That's how, how you we know, got the sponsorship. That's how you know you're selling, not when you wear a dress. So, Fabian, how are you doing? You good? You good? With- yeah, you're good. Uh, but Troy, you yeah, feel yeah. to like know how to count because you said the three. I was going to say that. Like, 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 there's four. Who was saying the three people on the panel? Well, I'm the announcer. We've got three people and the host. Hosting. Uh, uh. Ho- um, can we get can we get to the work part that we start the um show? Yeah. yeah, let's look that part. Yeah, I like that part better. And yeah, we're like back. Part, like, okay, so it, we're back. We never left. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we're gonna start up something called the Drowner. It's gonna be a shots game. Take a shot every time this podcast gets derailed and goes off topic. We seem to be famous for this. You need alcohol. And there goes my first shot. See. <laughs> We're off topic already. <laughs> you see? Drink, okay, no, drink, no, no, no. Drink, All right. drink. Seriously, seriously. The evolution of superheroism. All right. We're looking at what's changed throughout the ages. We've got the golden, bronze, and the new one, fourth age, the modern X. We're looking at how um, ideas have changed, how characters have changed. We're looking at the fact that there's been an increasing level of violence. As we've come through the age, we've gone from the campy to the super gritty and the super serious. Why does it happen? What does the public like? What's selling? And should we go back to where we were? Or should we just use our roots as a path into the... Got wood. Just wood. Fabian so wood. Talk- Start I... talking, Fabian. Any well, I... jump in? Yeah, well, in terms of like how superheroes have... I guess superheroism has evolved... You could look at the obviously started in the golden age when you had a lot of like vigilantes coming into the forefront of comics, and that was basically a response to the rampant amount of crime, and that was going on at the time, and obviously the stuff that's going on in World War Two. A lot of our superheroes were bred from that. You have like Captain America, Sergeant Rock, and all those characters born out of like World War Two, and like vigilantes were the answer crime. And that's basically what you had in the beginning. I know what anyone else could add about that. Well, that's true. I think that before, like, during the Silver Age and during the Golden Age of comics, where everything was campy and lighthearted, there was a, a lack of seriousness um, to what superheroes um, actually did on a daily basis. You know, it was just it was just basic black and white. You know. Mm good versus evil you know mm-hmm. there was a villain and it was a bad and there was a good guy and the good guy came saved the day you know in his heroic fashion and everybody went when there was always a happy ending right but as the stories progressed and as we matured and i think as the writers matured because i think most of the writers that actually are writing books nowadays are actually were fans uh, when they were growing up they actually started to bring um, a realism and a maturity to the comic book, comic books. It's not simply good versus evil anymore. There is more like gray areas in between them. You understand? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Right. I think comics did, made a, had a dip during the Silver Age when you know the war was over and everything. There wasn't really like a global villain for superhero to fight. So he had like these um like Lois Lane comic. And the Jimmy Olsen comics and Superman doing these all crazy things and Batman and Robin, you know, skipping around Gotham City with the bat and pole. And I think that was also <laughs> yeah. the backlash from um, um, Seduction of Innocent, that book by that author that said that um, comics were corrupting the youth and were spurring, you know, juvenile delinquency, which forced mm-hmm. the, the um, comic code. So comics were pressured into the Silver Age. And I think uh, one of the detriments that comics as a medium has had. Um, they weren't as censored as, let's say, movies or other medium at the time. So yeah. have you got anything, anything to add? Well, I, I, I honestly, I like what was going on right now in terms of the comics, the, um, the whole um, capture mm-hmm. the bad guy thing, thing and, um, and let him, and, and, and then just put him in, the, in jail and then you know, in the next couple of issues later, he's he's free. I guess we got past that. We we are looking at more. Um, everything you know is in in our reality and whole in this society we live in. So it reflects what we are, in what we are in, we encounter, and is reflected in the comics. So, so right now, mm-hmm. sorry, sorry, no, 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 go, go ahead, I, go ahead. I don't want. Oh no, no, I, okay. All, all I was gonna ask is, so what is it that you like? Do you like the term towards more mainstream realistic stories, or do you like the turn towards more grit? Um, is it, is it's, it, it's is a it mixture turn of towards grittiness that you like? It's or, a, mixture, a mixture of both. I, or then like, dealing with real world issues. I I like the mixture of both, but I don't like I don't like the too much of the real world issues into the the whole. Um, comic comic genre it's like i could deal with like it's like it's like nowadays we are seeing things like um like gay marriages like in um x-men right in x-men um it was astonishing x-men mm-hmm. where um north star and his life partner has no no got gotten married dc uh, take note please dc take note and, but well, dc done that already i mean DC, you know, they, dc caught uh, out didn't they no, no, they have no, not. No, no, they ain't cocked out. It's pretty... Um, lesbian. Uh, the new Green Lantern. You said cocked out, right? Not... Okay, I thought you said... You said cocked out. Yeah. yeah they didn't DC... Um... Okay, I you said help me here, because they haven't been following... I haven't been following... Batgirl. With that... With that... Marriage... Bat- that lesbian marriage that's supposed to go on. Did it happen? With Batwoman? Batwoman's getting married. Yeah, because yeah, they have... To my knowledge... She cocked out. I know it didn't happen, that part didn't went, happen, but they still... Uh, right. Yeah. Well, they still have... They do still have um, Apollo and Midnight here. Obviously, they're no longer married because, you know, the new 52 kind of reached everything earlier. And that never happened. Which what, what never happened? But there's still that... Storm, Storm, Stormwatch never happened. Well, okay. Well, I'm just saying that... For the sake of my sanity, I'm I'm in I'm in permanent okay. denial. Well, both DC and have um, homosexual characters, and I think that's a reflective of the times. Where I mean, in today's age, you know, every culture, every society has some characters who are homosexual. And another thing that we bring out is that there are a lot of female characters and a lot of like characters of other ethnicities, whereas in like the original days, everyone was Caucasian or male and male. And then with the introduction of Wonder Woman and then all the other female superheroes, you get a lot of female superheroes now standing toe to toe with male superheroes. And you have black superheroes, uh, Asian superheroes, you have Mexican heroes. All that, you know, it's no longer just simply the damsel in distress anymore. The nope. can in distress as well. Mm. You know, you can't save a man from a falling building now. It's okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You should you should save people from falling buildings. But it's, you it's, yeah, you mean someone yeah, falling from a building or a falling building? I think both. A building that falling? Clean up. Uh, I thought yeah, you said a falling yeah, building, or you mean falling from a building? Well, you should save people from falling buildings. Hmm. Hey, it happens every and day. And buildings that 
I see a building from falling. <laughs> I agree. But <laughs> buildings, buildings are people too. I take another shot to the night. Mm. Uh, yeah, that's true. We've derailed. I'm going to start keeping count here in, these, in the um, Skype right. bar. That's two so far. We've derailed yeah, twice. Yes. Um, Don't worry. About bringing... Make sure uh, get some vodka bottle. Mm. I'm going to fill the water with vodka. Vodka. Nah, Mo- a vodka mobby? Straight. I got, no, no, it's going to be vodka. That, that's not such mobby. a bad idea, no. yeah, vodka mobby. Another that's shot mobby to the vodka. head. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That is three shots. Now they're going to mm, think that we're purposely doing this. No, this, is, <laughs> this is not even scripted. <laughs> he, says, he says purposely, shot to the head. No. <laughs> oh, come on. How in the heck is... Pr- no, you know what? No, I'm not falling for that trick. No. Yeah, I'm not even commenting on that. Okay, no, no. Okay. It's, a it's a trap. No. It's as we were saying, no. Let's look at let's look at let's focus on some characters. What mm. characters can you think of that has that have over the years um evolved, pro- evolved from Superman. one? Oh boy. <laughs> wait. 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 That was Superman too already. that was too easy. Yes. That was too easy. All right, tell me more about Superman. That uh, inform us about Superman cuz we don't know anything about Superman. Let's let's not okay, let the well, hate be too strong, please. What hate? I don't, you know, let me, let me officially say. I am pouring, say, I'm pouring my glass. Let me, let me officially say. I don't hate Superman. I do not. I, I mean, the guy has cool, car- cool powers. Let's no not lose story. focus on the topic. Story, story's not bad. I just hate how people handle him. That's, that's it. Now, if we look at Superman, we've started off with the iconic Boy Scout character. Mm-hmm. At first, he was, you know, he was in the jewel golden age. He was lifting up the cars, saving the damsels from, from falling. He, he was from the, um, the Japanese, you know, running, running interference and, and messing with Hitler. It was all campy. Come forward now, they got rid of that and they started to focus on the pure aspect of the character. You know, in the Silver Age, he was trying to do everything, you know, right. He was encouraging everyone to eat the brick and and do the exercise, and then we come forward into the Bronze Age now, he got a bit more down to business, he was a bit more violent, he was a bit more no-nonsense, but he still focused a lot on him being this shining example, and obviously, that was DC's thing. If you want characters you can relate to, you go to Marvel. If you want icons to strive for it, you go to DC. But then comes the Modern Age, People started to complain. They were sick of the boy scoutedness. They were sick of, they were sick of the character being, being handled with kid gloves, and they took a more serious tone. What I'm gonna ask you guys is, if you look at that evolution, and you compare it, or you you analog it to what was pushing it. At first, we had the war going on, so obviously no one wants to face real life issues. So a Stories about what's really everyone's listening. Yeah, <laughs> stories that really. I guess he was saying that stories that really um uh, we could relate to. No, we have this. We have this boys' coat though that we don't even. Well, he's uh, not even a boys' coat anymore. Well, he, well, he so from the time he started killing people, and you know what? Hey, this is going back. This is my Mimi for the night. Batman. <laughs> Batman um oh boy punches a done. punches a a thug mm-hmm. they make a little noise right mm-hmm. and Superman kills someone everyone mm-hmm. loses their minds <laughs> you know what I mean I mean uh... Superman Superman killed a couple people this year alone and on film and in the comics but, 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 but I... Seth you you don't you don't understand mm-hmm. you you see. People like when things go according to plan. <laughs> that punches the little guy. Never, nothing goes wrong. But Superman destroys one little city. And all of a sudden everything goes crazy. Mm. Introduce like, like, a little anime. Like this podcast. <laughs> and the Oscar, mm. it goes to Troy. 
Mm. I'd like to thank everyone that made this moment possible. Mm. PlayStation. Mm. Moby. Ooh. Bread and yeah, Chew. And the liquid bread. And liquid bread. Drink it when you're almost dead. When you're half dead. And you need to be fed, ladies and gentlemen. Liquid bread. Yes. Another shot to the head, number five. No. As we back on point, we were talking about Superman. So, yeah, what I was asking you guys was, if you look at that analog, what do you think is pushing this evolution? Is it the people? Is it the time? Let me let me put a hypothetical situation to you. World War Three erupts next month. Tell me where the youths would go in the next five years. What would we be seeing? Would we go back into jokes and happiness to raise morale? Or do you think it would continue down the line? It's continuing now. What pushes this evolution? That's, 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 the, that's the basic point I'm, I'm trying to get at. What is pushing the evolution of superheroism? Can it, can it be... I believe it's, it's how comfortable we are in society. Well, how society is being portrayed. How, well, the, the world that we live in. It, we, we live in a world now that, um, that people are fighting for certain rights. Um, there are... There are murders being um, uh, murders are occurring all at every point in time. There's corruption. Not to say these same things that happened before, but now since they have this more um, media age, we are finding we are hearing more about these things every day. News, news. To me, right now, news. Watch the news. Watching CNN is is entertaining because I'm seeing this is this is this is not even things you can't even find on TV anymore on on a sitcom. These things that we are seeing in, in the news right now is in a few years ago we would never have thought of it and news is news is so it's fresh refresh every 15 minutes or every five minutes or whatever so we so we have this site we, we we sit down and in an hour we have been so desensitized that we don't even know what else to, to do and then the comments now is taking a little bit of that and putting it into into for that putting it into on paper for that what we fed i know the what we fed is not even like what works with my killer guy all oh, right and then what happens next we go on past that so then we have to do something you know, to get the, the, another another what we fed and so we will have um green lantern is gear all right we gotta talk that no so then we will go on now and do some other nonsense and then this and that and it's just like what is the next catch what's the next big thing what's the next headline so is that now. Is is that the reason why we had the nineties? The nineties was just about everything being extreme. But why? What? Where did it come from? Because people were tired of the whole stuff. They wanted more edgy. They wanted more hardcore comics. They wanted something that the youth of the of that age were at. Well, the youth got what they what they were looking for because we get something that. I don't pouches. think a lot of us can. Pouches? I take the pouches. I take some of us look past the pouches at a point in time. Because I, I saw the you pouches. You put liquid bread in the pouches. Well, um, Fable, is that you told me it had hammer space? Yeah, hammer space. Hammer space. You can put hammer space. We, we, there's hammer space in those pouches. Hmm. You can put a lot of liquid bread in there. <laughs> The liquid bread. Yes. Um, yes, anybody else have anything to add to that? Not the liquid um, bread. In terms of like, if, well, if, um, well, for me, it's like, it's twofold because you have on one hand comics that are escapism, which are like the fanciful stuff that's all, that doesn't really tackle any uh, issues. You mean the fantasy and then you stuff. have with the tri- hmm? You mean the fantasy stuff? Like My Little Pony and oh, stuff. Oh yeah, like, something like Green Lantern, something that happened. Well, no, no, not like My Little Pony. I mean, like, something like Green Lantern, something that happens in all outer space and that sort of stuff. Stuff that happens in like Justice League Dark with the supernatural stuff. Stuff that doesn't really address real world issues. And then you have other comics that address real world issues. Stuff like um, war, um, corruption, crime. You have um, Spider Man dealing with like death. Um, you have um, a Green Arrow where his war. 
drugs. You had the rape of um, Elastic Man's wife and all the other like really grubby life stuff. But it depends on the writer and the type of story being told. Question though, what, yeah. do, you, what do you think? We, we had a little DC had a little uh, 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 a shark probably within ten years or so. We did we did did some unthinkable things that we never saw in comics like the rape of Elastic Elastic Man. That's his name. Uh, Elongated Man. Sorry, Elongated my Man. Right. Mm -hmm. Um. The rape of his wife. There we had the um, killing of Jason Todd. And... Killing Jason Todd. We had the, the the woman in the fridge syndrome. Um, mm. Where Kel's girlfriend was um, cut into little pieces and shoved in the fridge. And, and for and, safekeeping. And yeah, you no, know, everything refrigerated. Mm -mm. Uh, after three days. days. After three days. After opening, keeping the fridge for three days. Let's just say he knows how to keep his woman fresh. Put <laughs> Yeah, we be here. But I guess it. he wasn't then, thinking. Uh, I guess he wasn't thinking outside of the box. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> da, da, da. <laughs> I like. Yeah. I. Uh, yeah. I so, didn't want to uh, laugh. Relax. Right? So, how... Yeah, and the characters you have like um, Hal Jordan, this clean cut heroic guy who could do no wrong, and DC make him a bad guy, turn him into Parallax. And then they kind of like did this retcon, like redemption thing with him. But at the time, Hero never went bad. Hero never did bad things. Oh, yeah. And then you have stuff like uh, Wonder Woman murdering Maxwell Lord uh, to justifiably save Superman and all no, the other dark half of that because he killed Beetle and I'll never forgive him for that. Mm. Oh, well. Good on you. Good on you, Diana. Good on, good on you. But you, see, but you still watch this here, right? No, Diana killed Max, <laughs> killed Max Willard, right? I mean, yeah. that's like, snap his neck. Yeah. Um, and what was, what, what was the re repercussions from that? Was, was she yeah. in prison? Did she just no. she just talk harsh? She like, you know, I got to do this thing because this is what I'm part of. This is me. This is me. Um, I treated myself and all that crap. And, that's and, not how they were. I guess it's, it's, it, was, it was never how her character was designed, so... Mm -hmm. It never bothered. It, I mean, it's, it's back to what the Joker said again. It, it was all going according to plan, plan. To everybody, Diana's a warrior, so yeah. she she's Amazon. She grew up on Themyscira. So what? What if she snaps one's neck? So what? Well, the thing is, is that the same thing with um, Doctor Doom in Marvel Universe. He's kind of like had diplomatic immunity. Don't forget, Diana is an ambassador to Themyscira for the entire Earth. So. You know, globally speaking, you know, yes, yeah, she murdered somebody, but at the same time, she comes from a race of immortal women. I don't think anybody will want to take them off. I don't think we are. I don't think it's, it's only that because if we are, if we are threatened by people and what they are capable of, they hit the world, whole world will be on ransom. Mm. But I think it's, it, it has gone to the point that, you know, you are my friend. Yes, I understood. I understand that you have... Um, Kill this person. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. um, but we going to deal with this here between ourselves. And you don't have to take no prison time because um, we know you're a good person inside. So you're going you gonna to stay outside. Of, you're going to stay out of prison. We're going to talk to you. And then two issues later, Maxwell, who um, who was killed? Mm, we, have gone past, we, have gone, we have gone past this um, this little... This little like, you know, it's a little trip in our life, in our, in the, on our, on our rocky road, on our, um, gold paved road to, um, to whatever. This little, this little, um, loose rock or whatever that good, that, that just tripped us over. We got past that. Mm -hmm. it's, it's no problem. We, we, we have, we have grown past that. We have accepted that and just don't do it again. And we will, we will move on. Right. Now, my two cents about that whole thing that you just mentioned. Um, I think that sometimes comics is want this bring out this belief about redemption, and this continuous cycle that you know, no matter how bad a person, they can be changed, right? But realistically, as the comics have progressed and try to, like as you said, reflect um, our world as much as possible, is it realistic for us to continuously have characters, villains? kill people continuously and be put in prison to escape to kill again is it is it feasible would it really work in a real world scenario no that you mentioned that i i wrote an article 
he got it there about the um, Arkham Asylum, the, mm-hmm. the experiment in, in insanity. Yeah. And and it was dealing. Check it out, folks. Yeah, check it out on on www. dot com. And, oh. and um, wow, Cat has a website. Shameless plug again. Yes. So powered uh, by Liquid Bread. When you're half dead and you need to be fed, Liquid, liquid bread. bread. Yes. No. I was talking yeah, about, around, about, yeah, about Arkham Asylum and what we are doing in terms of um, like keeping just keeping these criminals for the taxpayers to deal with them, and then later on, you know what? This the they miraculously just escaped from prison and we back at this whole thing again. So, so it was like, do we? I agree with what you're saying, it's like Simon. Um, we don't need this um, this drama. This every minute you got you put the penguin in the jail, next thing the penguin wobble out of jail. Well, I think the problem. I think the problem with that is you are no forced. You're no forced with dealing with two things. Listen, I don't tell, deal... listen, Troy. Don't tell me this nonsense about if you kill people, you drop in the same level as them. I, don't give me that. Uh, don't give me that rationale. I, I, I wasn't going. You okay? Just see, you just you just want to kick me in the chest, all right? Uh, no, I want to kick you in the chest, I but don't give me. I, I get I get terror scenes in there. Like oh, no. like, like watch this. What this part? No, you're gonna kill. You're gonna like, like any character. Who can get a character? Um, uh, let's say, let's say the Parasite. person that killed the person that killed um, that killed Batman's um family. Batman going, like, Batman going, get in his head and he has shaking and you no, know, the rain is falling and the thunder, like the thunder lightning and everything and you no know, dramatic scene and and then dark then um like, they will come and say Batman, don't do it, don't drop to his level, don't do it. But is he truth? Than this. But is he truth? Oh yes. It's it's the truth. It's not a truth that you want to face because everyone everyone wants to judge, but it's it's the truth. Mm-hmm. But you got also got to ask yourself, well it's uh, well it's true. Should we allow that truth to go? I... Take the, the Joker is the best example. You don't want to sink down to that level, but every time he escapes, that's why we have a death penalty. Many, how exactly? Gotham doesn't have a death penalty. But but now here's the problem, and that's why I was about to say just now. How are you gonna balance the fact that you have characters that people love? You know that you want to keep those characters in circulation so that you make money, while at the same time trying to make sure that your your um comic story goes a different route and keeps keep uh, a certain level of realism never seen before. So, Seth, what do you what would you want to see? Would you want to see the, the Joker die and uh, he's never brought back, which forces the creative team to think one else or something else to take his you see, place? The, 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 and the, does that does that create another problem now? Do we replace do you replace one trope for another where no characters die permanently, but there is this, there's this trope now of the ever the ever continual rehash where the Joker dies, all of a sudden they create someone else, and then when you start to squint, you realize they want to keep the Joker, but they want to keep their promise. So you're like, this character has been the Joker for the past fifteen years. Each each new thing seems to be kind of like the Joker. So how do you balance that? It, that's when that's when you said the, you said the ideal thing there. Creativity. No people. No, and and another thing to mention, the the cash cow. It got to be milked. So we are we got we got Batman will be Batman for forever. Bruce Wayne will be Bruce Wayne forever. Yes, Robin, Robin grows up. Robin? Gets old, gets married, you know, has kids, and Batman will always be Batman. And, Batman you know, will always be thirty something. You, you know what? <laughs> this is why like people didn't like it, right? But I like when when um. Hello. Still here. I I like when um. Spider Man Spider Man died. Mhm. I like it because you know what? We still keeping the the man of Spider Man alive, right? Mhm. But we have no gone past Peter Parker. Mhm. We are no longer just base everything on Peter Parker. We have gone past Peter Parker. Even in um, the Ultimate Universe, we have gone past the character of Peter Parker. So no longer is Peter Parker um, recognized as Spider-Man. We have another person take that mantle. And I liked it when the, the when Batman was was supposedly killed and Dick took over his um, the role. <laughs> Dick. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Dicking out a suit. That don't be aggressive, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. Don't be aggressive. No, I, I like that there, right? This, no, this is Batman. The same model. The model is still there. The character is still there, but we could see that it was a totally different Batman because even if you compare two of them, it was a slimmer and a younger. Even the costume looked, for some reason, I don't know, but to me, the costume looked younger. It looked leaner. It didn't look as, as big as when Bruce Wayne was wearing it. So you knew, and he was more, um, he was more athletic to me. But but it was it was bringing you a different type of Batman. This Batman's inexperienced. This Batman, even if the same villain had a face, this Batman, this the the, the villain would not he would not deal the villain the same as Batman would. Probably he would get more hits. He will take more damage, but ultimately he will win in the end. So you're talking about the battle for the cowl? No, I talk I talk about Wayne. Um, before mm-hmm. that, before that, when he was when when Grayson was the was Batman, when he took the when he took the mantle, and Did then that he, happened in Batman. That, no, they were they were that, that was when they were no point no who they wanted that's when um Jason came in and he was no trying to to you know clean up golf from the Batman was going never was trying to get the Batman's um mantle but that time um Dick had a, had it already Dick mm-hmm. was Dick was Batman in, in Justice Leagues and different things already so um I like I like that that idea I liked when but um, it comes down to the fact that if we have been raised already we have already lost track of the my point is is that we're ready we as comic book fans have been growing up to that clark kent is going to be superman bruce mm-hmm. wayne is going to be batman mm-hmm. you know just is going to be captain america you know i re- i no matter who else may take the the model for a little bit it always will come down to the same thing but but we but you see look at Mega Superman right I didn't, I didn't mention this to you guys in the in the in cat the the Facebook group anyone from Krypton that had landed on Earth would have been Superman anyone anyone yeah seventy years ago mm-hmm. but no that argument is irrelevant why is it irrelevant because we already have a custom to knowing that Clark Kent is Superman. I don't, I don't, I don't believe that. I believe that it could be. You could. No, you could it's you could, not gonna happen. It's never gonna happen. So you try to tell me. You try to tell me they'll never have someone. Well, that guy um replaced Superman. That had a that had a um a weakness. It was late. Monel. Yeah. He was. He's a dark fans, summer. He's not even then, from Krypton. Dark exactly. summer. Yeah, but he he had the same powers as he he when Superman <laughs> left the planet. He had the same powers as um he got the same powers as Superman. This to a weaker degree. Well, he hold his own. And on on in Metropolis until he came and back. And then yes, the well. fans got tired and said, "Okay, yes, bring back Superman." Oh yes, go. So let me ask something. So we had we had Seth saying that he was pretty pleased to see the mantle, uh, the cowl put up and the mantle passed on. Give me each of you three characters that you want to see the same thing happen, a la Spider Man. Three characters that you want to see their mantle. Passed on and passed on permanently. Mm. I would sure wanna. I would. I would go. I would go this one first. Captain America. All right. I like now, my Bucky. Want mantle pass too. I like when Bucky was Captain America, because Bucky had, Bucky had a weakness that Captain America didn't have, and that was that um, uh, uh, cybernetic arm. To me, it could have been looked as a plus, but it was a weakness. To me, I saw it as a weakness because everybody used to take off that arm at one point in time. And he was not, he didn't have a super ser- soldier serum, but he was on, I won't say on par with, 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 with Captain America, because it, he had the was, infinity formula, but he wasn't had a super ser- soldier yeah. serum. Yeah, that's it, nowhere it, near it, as good. It, 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 it gave, he only could have lived for a long time, and then over training, he could have just maintained his, um, his fitness or whatever. But, um, Bucky was convincing to me, and Bucky, um, did what he had to do at that point in time. Um, I could see who could see get else get replaced. Um, you see, it's hard. To, I was thinking about mutants, but it's hard to replace mutants because mutants doesn't really don't really have a secret identity. That's just who they are. So if you basically if you kill a mutant, you will just replace another mutant with with a different powers. That's what makes the mutants the X Men so unique. Um, I would like to see a new Iron Man. I really. Would, yeah, I would like to see. I would like to see um, um, Tony Stark 
give up that mantle and 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 give it to someone else as someone but, but who? twist on it but who i have i right now honestly have no idea who it could be, even be a, a few i was thinking about um Rhodes, but Rhodes has failed so many times as war machine it'll be hard to say to give him the model for him to just for him for him as a character to fail again you realize that all the characters you just mentioned you have no emotional attachment to so be it so you cares nothing about uh era mind you cares nothing about um captain it? america okay so i hear nothing about Batman too right so Batman, who you really think that dick could actually fill the shoes of Batman? i <laughs> uh, 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 you, you see the idea yeah. that was easy. yes that was, i do that was yeah i do you can certainly I fill do. the pants <laughs> no, 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 all right, that, take a shot, take a shot, all right, it's I'm, the I'm, it. I'm bringing Six us, shots later. no, no, we're up to seven, we're up to seven, we're up to seven, anyway. good job, Fabian, good job, we, mm. I thought we were going to get to the end of the um, podcast, and we weren't going to derail anymore, but, <laughs> you know, you'll never let me down, right, mm. um, what, what, what I'm seeing is, um, <laughs> Um, I could see these characters. Man, Tony Stark was was I remember for the beginning. I mean, like, jeez, give somebody else a chance. Let me move past this. Are, are we are, are we are we no scared to give up the cash cows? Yes. Start something new. Yes. All right. So that's two, Seth. One more, and then we move on to words. I was I was thinking about a female. Um. Well, that's that's normal and and healthy. Yeah. But what comic character would you want to replace? I would say Thor. Thor? Yeah. Remember uh, time... I, didn't, I didn't see that coming. You know, so so Thor, who's, who's going to take the mantle? Thor, Thor, Thor has a, a son. Um, what's his name? Um, so you can remember his name? Um, um, he was well, in... I, well, I've got the internet right here. So check it, check it. Out. He had a son. He had a, he had a son. And... Uh, I thought I found a thing that his son was gonna take off, take over the mantle. But you remember we gotta remember that eventually um, Thor is gonna be like Odin at a point in time. Uh, I guess get get that age where he would have to rule Asgard and Modi and Magni. It was a girl and a boy. No, it's uh, oh, some I'm seeing here, I'm seeing here world Thor thing. the Norse god of thunder no no wait. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. That is that is actual mythology. I need to find out what's the name of the son in the comics. In Marvel Comics. He had a son, though. I can remember. When he used to follow uh, Thor back in the day, he had a son. Um, I cannot remember his name right now. But, um, right. I, I would like to see. Because we, we, we got this thing that we need. The, the power hoses must be. Um, must stay. They must be staples. Right through. And I think that we got to get past that. We have to think that the the comics can survive without these people. Look at that. Remember when um Captain um um Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman was out of the the DC comics for for a whole year. Mhm. Yeah. The comics survived because it was yeah. something fresh. It was something new. And those main characters, or they, they basically between three of those, they saved the world all the time. When it comes to when it comes to crisis, that everyone has to be together. So I you can see that you know, I give people a chance. If you do it, and then you later on you say that they were trapped and they were in some altered dimension, trapped or something, and bring it back, you know, do something like that. But we gotta get past these people just being in the forefront, and that is it. That's my take mm-hmm. on it. All right, words. Um, I'm a I'm a purist. I I I don't really think there's any characters I can see myself being seen replaced by a a a a Magni. A, a, car, a carbon copy. Magni. Magni. M A G N I. Mm-hmm. He had a hammer too, right? Ah, uh, hold it. Well, let's see. Dense body, Asgardian physiology, granted a great stamina, blah, 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 blah. Position in the Norse god of strength, blah, blah, blah. All the usual. I am not seeing anything about. Oh, wait, wait. He wore a suit of Asgardian armor. 
Mm. And at one point, he gained possession of Mjolnir. Okay. All right. Same. So he was worthy. Mm. But mm. seems like before that, he liked axes. Uh, wouldn't you? <laughs> nope. <laughs> okay, that's it. <laughs> We are the most mm. unprofessional podcasters ever. <laughs> Half the podcast is about anything but the podcast. This is lovely. It's, it's mm. true. So who's who's next? You um, you were you were you were on you are you were doing something. So Simon was, Simon's a purist, huh? I am purist. I don't think there's any character that can see being replaced. Um, I, I want to see replaced. My Hugo, but, but if you had to, if there if there were someone, so a, a few persons that could be done, who would your top three picks be? All right, um, Superman. Oh yeah, again, I would be early. Who? Um, who's, well, who's who's going to take the mantle? I don't know. Boy. <laughs> I I, I, yeah, I don't know. Get, get to Superboy Prime. <laughs> he does a good job. He does a good job. But you know he has a biological son. Um, in the comics, no. In which comics? John, John Kent. Um, Superboy. You mean in the future? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Who happens to be Lois and Clark? Lois and Superman's son, but Superman is currently dating Wonder Woman. Hmm. Hola, Bashman. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I want to see that, Maury. Maury yes, superhero. Yes, and the father is. Yes, mm. of course. I put your spoon in Maury. You, you know. are the father. <laughs> don't forget that, boys. Just don't put your spoon in more than one soup pot. Yes, well, you don't, know how they did huh, mm. you don't know how they did it on Krypton. They did it rough. <laughs> Young boy, all know how they did it. We all know. Mm-hmm. They we did it know. rough. That's how they did it. Oh, oh, you know boy. what? Take nope. a shot, boys. Take a shot. Derailed. No. <laughs> listen, <laughs> this will derail it some more. And just, <laughs> listen, we, I just, just, just don't, don't look at print of thought, but this is, I just derailed it a little bit. Mm. A little bit. Superman's um, chem, um, bio, his um, physiology. His, his physiology, yes. Mm-hmm. That was the word I was looking for. Right. And morphology. He is I, I why I have not I have not seen anyone dissect him. Mm-hmm. I don't mean like cutting him off in pieces, but I mean like telling me does in his body I, he got he got he's humanoid, but is his body it is Krypton is, is Krypt, um Kryptonians have the same makeup as humans? Yes. They move a heart, liver, yes. kidneys, lungs, guts, mm-hmm. everything. The only the only difference is their cellular structure, when it's exposed to UV radiation, seems to absorb the energy and convert it into an incredibly dense but stable bioelectric aura. And that, all is what, that is what that is what translates into his yes, yeah, that's what translates it's into what? his durability. Mm. I think essentially, a yeah. Essentially, he is a plant. He takes, he takes sunlight and turns he into takes radiation. Well, he takes sunlight on the spectrum that will be given out by a yellow sun, converts it into that bioelectric aura. That's where he gets the tactile TK. That's where he gets the durability from. The flight has been explained as him being able to use that same aura to either shift gravitons around him or push himself off the ground mm. uh hover mm-hmm. as for the i don't rem- what, what is it how what is it they said he does with his heat vision uh, heat vision is is like his expulsion of like waste um solar waste and the x-ray vision x-ray vision is not so much a projection but his eyes could perceive um different wavelengths so he can actually see radio waves, ultraviolet, infrared. Yeah, but how is he? But how is he? Sh- so he has perfect control over his corneas. Then he, uh, yeah, he can he can, and- he can shift his perspective, his uh, his cortex. But he doesn't expel X rays. He sees an X rays. He only expels heat vision, which is um, red solar energy, which is 
the yellow energy um, filters through his body and expels through his eyes. At a lower wavelength. Yeah. Although we know he can amp that up. Yeah, he, he can amp so that that's up. Why, that's why he gets tired after an incredibly powerful blast of heat. Yeah, because technically, um, yes, he's he's expelling his energy, his use of energy. Okay. Uh, out of his eyes. Let us right, we get back on track now. That was just a... he, has he ever prematurely expelled his um, heat vision or... <laughs> oh, yeah. Um... I, 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 <laughs> <It's> <laughs> if you watch Smallville, then yes. <laughs> oh. um, and you mm. reeled that 10. <laughs> uh, I just want to take a shot every time Seth mentions Superman and his hate. Yeah. <laughs> you know what posts on, on Kat's Facebook is about why you don't like about Superman? <laughs> what? What are you guys talking check, about again? Check it out. Let me see for yourself, ladies and gentlemen. Uh-huh. <laughs> Notice we're real quiet. We're just keeping real quiet. We're like, what? No, but, but, but um, people have an issue with um all this power and that sort of stuff. I mean, like, a real criticism would be of the character himself rather than his extraordinary powers. I mean, a lot of other characters are either as powerful or more powerful than Superman. So arguing that man, this character too powerful, doesn't really go away. Um, you know, power. That's a good point. Power. Wait, but mm-hmm. before we, before we go there, I didn't give, I didn't give my three. I want to mm-hmm. see the Superman mantle passed on. I want to see the Batman mantle passed on. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. This is me saying, I want to see the Batman mantle passed on. I deeply enjoyed Batman Beyond. And a storyline that shows me the mantle being passed on to someone else and carries me and carries me on to it being given to Terry. As long Mm -hmm. as it's written well, I would deeply enjoy. Mm -hmm. I would deeply enjoy that. Mm -hmm. And my third. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, the Venom mantle's already been passed on and I like where it is now. so, (laughs) So. it's no reason. It's no reason for me to say anything of that. Mm-hmm. Who would be my third person? I would want to see the mantle hung up. Give me some time on this, and while I think about that, power, the evolution of superheroism, power, power. Mm-hmm. Whose powers have you seen evolve? And what evolution have you enjoyed? And let me say no. Mm-hmm. I deeply, deeply, deeply enjoyed Sp- Peter Parker's evolution into a more powerful Spider-Man. And I was so crushed when it didn't become a staple. Listen, I love... I, 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 Troy, <laughs> Troy. Troy. You meant yeah. that part when he could have made anything, he could have touched touch anything, he could have feel the vibrations. Wait, mm-hmm. he could have got way Yeah, and he had these stick. really cool he had these really cool spikes that would come out from I, um, underneath Scarlet, his wrist. Scarlet and Spider has that now. Scarlet they Spider has they that. exuded they exuded this special venom yeah. that mm-hmm. allowed him to he could even paralyze beings that venom should not logically work on. He was like sp- beings that were energy based, for example. He could um poison them. His spider sense got ramped up. I mean, ramped up to the he point where he was able up. he was able to easily outwit Iron Man in his extremist armor. And we all know how fast yeah, Tony's was, reaction he, time he was, is. He was he was he was amazing. He got stronger. His senses went up. I loved it. He had on the kick-ass black suit. And I was like, this is this is a Peter Parker for the ages. And I'm ready now. The they said, you know what? Let us put him back the normal strength and the normal everything once again. I, to, I, I was mean, I was so disappointed. I was like, wow. And you know, it was it was didn't even he didn't even he wasn't even there long enough for me to for me to see him do anything awesome. You know, mm-hmm. I, I was mm. I, I I was Doctor Strange. <laughs> Doctor Strange. I know okay. it's been passed on before, but I am ready for it to be passed on 
but it was passed on and then he took it back over again right right like, i i'm just, just indian I, giver <laughs> I, pretty much dr strange is very dr strange is a very complex Peculiar? wonderful character uh, I, yes. I up to know no one has been able to rate, rate him properly because yeah he agree so, he is because one you have to go you have to do this you have to go have to go deep into the mystic arts and then you will have to bring this whole um this whole cult thing into the into the comic which is which it does already but i mean right now it is is a manageable level that that anybody could read it without having to say you know next thing you know i'll be, I'll be there with a star on the on the ground and i'll be killing the cutting the chickens neck off and you know, speaking of, you know, you know, speaking of travesties and chicken, I ain't got no wingdings yet. I ain't had none either. I, I look at I. I thought I thought cat was my family. I thought it would see a post or a or a a personal message from a cat member just telling me to you know I, I got you dog. Meet me meet me at this chaffet. Uh, I think I happen, but Listen, my family ain't coming through for I me. Had a, I had no wingdings, but it had some tenders. or tenders were good when it had it. Anyway. I would take a drink to that. That's true. I, I can I can say we've been doing yeah, that's 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 twelve. Licorishness has derailed us. Alright, so so words, words. A power. Mm-hmm. A power. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Who and what power and we're talking about evolution. Um actually when Superman had that energy being kind of powers. Hated I, was, it. I, I actually liked it. Hated okay. it. Tell me more. Tell me no explain this. <laughs> Tell me, it's been said to the fans, right? Oh boy. Why were, why did he have to go into blue and um, uh, uh, red? I mean, is so just because that means if he had, so he didn't go blue, red, and yellow, because he had a little yellow in his costume too. Blue, <laughs> yellow, and black. Pick it up. It's, I thought it was something different. I think it's to the character. I thought it was something different. I thought it was <laughs> interesting twist, you know, and I thought it was, it was pretty good. Well, I think I think I am I am biased here because as a kid, I was new to comics, and then I never used to follow Superman. I will admit to everyone, and you'll probably want to throw stones at me for this, but the Superman I liked, besides the uh, old one that has like gray on either side of his head, and he's immensely strong. I'm not sure which. That's you know, the um, show. Right, That's right, right. Yeah, love right. But besides that, because he's not mainstream, mm. mullet, mullet head Superman. <laughs> <laughs> I loved mullet head Superman. <laughs> I loved it. I thought, I thought as a kid, he was so freaking badass. I love mullet head Superman. Superman the mullet head. What were his parents teaching him? <laughs> right. But, but you know, you know, on on that on that point, you know, I never used to follow Superman a lot. And then mm-hmm. all of a sudden, I got this comic. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, there, there, there was this guy in a containment suit who at first I thought was Captain Adam, but then they saw the S and it was like, well, okay, what? And he's fighting Metallo. And Metallo catches him in his chest because Superman, Superman does his trade and true, even though he's made of energy. Metallo, you know, is his take. Yeah, he was in a junkyard. So he had assimilated. A ton of stuff in a junkyard, and he was he was getting big. Then the fight led to a harbor, and he assimilated a battleship. So he's gigantic. Superman flies at him, you know, tried and true battle tactic. Fly in, bash it up, and think about it later. Mm-hmm. Metallo captures him in his chest, starts a circuit so that he can use um, Clark as a battery, and then closes the closes the loop, makes it a closed circuit. So. Superman is continuously recharging and charging Metallo, and it turned me off. It was just like, all right, this is this is garbage. Because the only way Superman could get out of it was to turn into a human being, fell out to Metallo, fell into some rubble. He was hurt, and I never got the comic after that. So I'm gonna bow out of saying that I hated it because I I think it just my my experience with him at first was just def- garbage. I assumed it was garbage, and I never went. I never went back. Hmm. So I, I, I'm going to bow out. I'm going to bow out. I have. I'm abstaining on my vote on energy. Energy Superman. I'm abstaining. But bring back the mullet, ladies and gentlemen. Bring back the mullet. <laughs> we need that in our lives. And the and the badass Coast City 
Attitude. Mm. Any any anyone ever read the um Core City arc? Yeah, I did. That, that got destroyed, and how was you know at one point how was um trying to recreate it, and before that there were a bunch of aliens um wreaking havoc all inside of the the ruins. A oh, whole bunch uh, of heroes had to get together and clean them out. Yeah, I watched that. Uh, I want them to kill every single Green Lantern human, <laughs> except for Hal Jordan. No, uh, John, Stewart, <laughs> John Stewart. John Stewart. Man. John Stewart. Nah, he's the Green Lantern. For the you gotta get rid yes, of everybody. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. I'll kill him. All right. So what about what about Fan of Steel? Power. Power. Who's power. As it as a, yeah, and as it as evolved. Who's power? Um. Well, not you love. The only evolution I see in power that really is was substantial was Superman. I mean, before originally he could only leap a quarter of a mile, and he didn't have all those extra sentry powers. And now the man is tossing planets. And at one point he was, you know, electric blue and electric boogaloo Superman. Boogaloo. Right, we are talking about boogaloo's, <laughs> right? Boogaloo. Boogaloo. No, we are talking about boogaloos. Uh, but yeah, uh, in Fabian, terms of... do you do you know what a boogaloo is, Fabian? <laughs> I think you'll find out in the next five, four, three, three two, two, one. A boogaloo is a bead inserted into the penile region, <laughs> which is used to enhance stimulation during coitus. Coitus. You see, Seth, you always telling me to keep it as speedy as possible, and I, I feel I feel quite proud of myself just now. <laughs> and he says they're all wearing a monocle. Like a sir. <laughs> like yes. Like a wingless sir. Mm. Uh, I, I'm, it's my turn. It's my turn to do the, the money, the, the not the money thing, the, um, the poet thing. I already did mine already. No, <laughs> no, 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 you didn't. No, I started with words, then I went Fabian. I mentioned Spider Man, so yeah, what about you? Um, this is a tough one. You know what? I, I'm I'm a little unclear on how powerful. No, to these two characters. I'll do it with two characters. Mm. Thor and Hulk. Mm. I'm on. I'm on clear. How powerful these guys really are. Don't, don't worry. Well, I can. I can help you. Well, no, 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 I, I can. I help you. Let me just. Let me just finish. Let me just finish this. This. This fault here. Mm. Um, I am on clear. I hope hopefully they are. If they actually made steps forward, because, um, to me, in Marvel, and DC, in DC, there's Superman, the go-to guy. If they can't get them beat, call Superman. And in Marvel, it seems like if they can't get them beat. You call Hulk or you call Thor, mm-hmm. and, and it has me a little confused. Like, who is really the more powerful in the in the worthy when um uh augmented um Hulk fought a fought Thor. Mm-hmm. Um, Thor had to hit him in in the, in the orbit, right? I that mm-hmm. nearly I that literally killed him. Well, he put him in a coma like state, cause that messed him up. He had to go to Asgard to, to get healed. <laughs> sorry. Uh, it's just the name of his his um yeah. planet. I'm sorry. The Asgardians, boy, we guard that. But <laughs> and that's it, folks. Thanks for coming <laughs> to the podcast. I'm the Everyman's Everyman, Cast of Troy. Simon, cut the feed, cut the feed. <laughs> Listen, anyway. Uh, this show has been brought to you by Liquid Red. Simon, cut the feed. <laughs> <laughs> so right. So it, it really messed him up, and that was a hope that was that, <laughs> it was, would. that was given. That was given. More. <laughs> it was really messed him up. We've derailed. We've derailed. That's what number fifteen. That's fifteen shots. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah we yeah, should yeah. be in a coma. No, that's what she got. <laughs> getting a little. Derailed. I'm getting a little woozy. Mm-hmm. Ah, we've derailed again. No, right. I was a little confused. Like, no, this hope got more powerful. Mm-hmm. But he was the worthy. You know, the worthy had hammers, and the, and they were. If you guys know the know the story, the storyline, mm-hmm. right? You guys mm-hmm. know the storyline, right? Yeah. Right. So um, that's um fear. What about our audience who isn't? Hmm? What about our audience who isn't? Give me a synopsis. Well, well, well fear itself was about about the worthy. It was seven. It was seven people, right? That the same way that we had um a forest hammer, 
Minier, it was it was like it Mjolnir. had Mjolnir. 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 All right, all right. Let me kind of break Mjolnir. it down. All right. Right. The so, was basically so, about, so basically, um, so, so you, who, who, who doing this here? Who doing this storyline synopsis thing here going on here? I, man? I, could, I could do it, you know, because you didn't sound, you sound shaky. <laughs> all right, words. Do it. Do it, words. Do you it. You sound a little iffy. Yeah, you like it. Anyway, do it. It's because Odin, of Odin's shots. Odin's brother, we did not know this happened. Odin's brother came back and he was Lord of Fear. So he had his own um, followers, which all had were represented by these hammers that had the ability to possess um, individuals with the, the people that inhabited the hammers' personalities. Mm-hmm. Um, they possessed, uh, Hulk was possessed, Thing was possessed, um, some uh, other characters. Colossus, were... Colossus. Yeah, Colossus, I believe. Colossus, Colossus. Was... Sin. all of these. Sin was possessed. Sin's, Sin's skull, uh, Red Skull's daughter. Red Skull. Um, oh. All these characters were possessed. And uh, some people, spent... uh, who we never from the sea? Um... Namor? Not Namor, not Namor. Oh, his, his. A, um... a tumor. A tumor. Black. A tumor. Right. A tumor? A tumor. A tumor. Not a tumor. It could be that. Right. Tumor. Right. So they not a tuna. So he just had a story. But he from the sea. Could that... he could be tuna? He could be a fish. Oh lord. Hmm. We basically had a storyline that built up, built up until it came to a point where it was pointless and it had no long term repercussion. <laughs> I was forgotten after a year. Mm. Like more storylines. As no, not all, just that. The thing, the grey gargoyle, a tumor. But this is the thing, right? This is the thing. The Hulk. It's not a tumor. Titania, this is absorbing a... <laughs> man, juggernaut. Sin and the serpent. I have no idea. Listen, the, look. Yeah. The thing, the thing is so much nonsense. It is. This is derailing again. Take a shot, everyone. Which is worth the not, thing no, or everyone or, or Grayson? Huh? Which is worth the thing or Grayson? In what way? In terms of what? Well, you have the thing, and then you have Dick. I see where you went there to get another no, shot. No, no, no. Why did we fall I, for it? I, I, I didn't know he would go there. The thing and I, I take another shot. Anyway. Where are we at now? This 18? is like 20. 20? 29-ish. 30? Anyway. I'm calling it 18. Listen. Mm. I remember when the, the, the thing had a fight. Um, um, the normal, the normal Thor, right? And Thor was saying, like, I don't want to beat you. I don't want to do that. And, and the Thor threw uh, his... Hammer right through the the chest of thing. I mean, like that would literally kill the guy, right? And then his then um Franklin came and healed him and blah blah. Then we realized that Franklin has solved this whole matter from the beginning. But that's another mm-hmm. story by itself. That's another. That's another. We we will go. We, that's another podcast because maybe we will talk about the the maybe we will talk about these these incredibly powerful people that do nothing, right? <laughs> so so then um we so then it killed him and it was like. So, this, uh, this, 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 this thing that was, that his powers were in, vastly increased. He was killed by a normal, normal th- baseline tar, like normal tar, like nothing, nothing adamant about him. He just normal. So, then he had a fight hole, a hole, he had a fight hole, and then he lit Hulk in his face, and then he was just normal, you know, this is nothing spectacular about him. So, I was saying to myself, who is the real Who's his real power host in the Marvel U? Is it Hulk or is it Thor? Okay, Hulk. well, I can. You know the real I can, I can, I can, I can explain that. I can well, explain I was ready that. to comment at that point in time. <laughs> That's the real power host. I, uh, I, all right, no, I, I can, I can explain it from the Hulk perspective because that's my, that's my baby right there. All right. You think Hulk is your baby? Hulk. So I'm straight. So who's the um, who's the mother? You ever see Linda angry? Mm-hmm. Once again, that's number nineteen. Yeah, that's right. Linda, I love you, sweetie. All right, don't kill me, please. Call me, Met, was it Misa, Mensa? See, none of them can even help me. <laughs> we are the, we are the, how are you talking about, Captain? When I don't, when I don't know when the hotlines, the the, the hotline for abuse mails. Was it, was it Misa, I, Mensa? I wonder what Shield. You know. <laughs> Not Shield. Not Shield. If you had a call shield, mm-hmm. don't worry to call them because 
Cause um, cause then his people might come and help you. And no, you don't I, don't want, uh, help. I don't want. I don't want us or help. Though. You don't want to mm. help. No. I won't punish your sort of help. Nah, nah. I ain't really feeling now, you know. I'm going to take another shot to that one because that's we had, true. We had no, as yeah. you were saying, true. And that is 20. All right, the thing with Hulk and his evolution as a character, which is interesting in comparison to the general trope that you get with superheroes, is Hulk's evolution has been more psychological than quantitative. If you. The strange thing with Hulk and his power set is that writers have always delved into Hulk's psyche. And unlike other characters where death will be a reason for a power-up, an upgrade of equipment will be a reason for power-up, some natural biological process like evolution, like the beast, for example, would be a reason for power-up. The thing with Hulk is Hulk is everything at once. He's completely useless and he's top of the tier <laughs> godlike, all depending on what psyche the writer digs into the story and pulls out. There is a Hulk called Devil Hulk. Have you <laughs> ever seen him? Yeah. Do you know how powerful Devil Hulk is? It took Grey Hulk, the Hulk that can talk, and Savage Hulk to hold back Devil Hulk. Doctor Strange has an inordinate amount of wards on Banner's mind to make sure that Devil Hulk doesn't claw his way out and take take dominance in terms of personality. So that's that's the that's the weird thing with the Hulk character. It his his evolution has always been based on psyche, and that's something that I love about the character too because it makes him different. You can find a lot of analogs to, especially if you study psychology, which I have, you could find a lot of analogs to different topics in psychology pertaining to Maslow's hierarchy of needs, different types of personalities, depression, all of that gets tied into a good Hulk story, and I love it. I love it. What I would like to see, though, is them streamline what they're going to do with the character, and I think think they're starting to get there in Invincible. It's, it's called Invincible Hulk, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'm i yet to read it properly, but from what I've seen, I'm very impressed. No, the thing, I I don't know what to tell you. The poor man's just part of the Fantastic Four. So, you, so, so now no, that we go, now we move from powers, now let's go to, let's go to these teams. Let's go to teams. And the I, got, Four, I, got, I got a nice one after this. I got right. a nice one after this to bring us on. So we after this one, we got one more, and then we will we will we will start closing them. No, um, right. let's look, let's look at teams. Let's look at the Fantastic Four. Has the Fantastic Four made any progression in their time as the first family? Yeah, they're they they're mm-hmm. good at waltzing. They're good at waltzing. They love to take one magnificent, glorious, beautiful step forward and then go right back to the same thing. The Actually, we've had, we've had, well, they've the had biggest, the same thing for years. Yeah, the, the same. The biggest change that was permanent Rocky was Franklin's birth. Mm-hmm. Beyond that, we had Spider-Man joining the Fantastic Four after um, the... Johnny's death, which was short lived. You mean when it was FF, when it was the Future Foundation. Mm-hmm. Right, which was short lived. Mm-hmm. Because he died. And as a, and honestly, as a side, note, on a side note, anyone, anyone sees that, recognize that Spider Man. Wait, one second, please. Right, I was saying on my. On anyone, the... anyone recognize that Spider Man um, seems to be the throw around character in Marvel? It's all, yeah. You know, it's like, we'll it's like you walk up, you walk up to someone and go, we've invented a new team. Great. How many characters does it have? Five. How many have we written in so far? Four. What do we do? Uh, add Spidey. Add Spidey. <laughs> about we how had a team. How, about add Great. how many characters were there? Four. What happened? I wrote one out. Um, add Spidey. Add Spidey. We're, 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 introducing, we're introducing a subset of a popular team. 
That's great. How many members is it going to have? Eight? Ten? You fill all who's the roles? Lead them? Who's going to lead them? Spider-Man. I guess. Yeah, who's going to lead them? Uh, I'd, I can't forget about the most I'd important spider- person here. Wolverine. <laughs> Forget, forget, uh, remember Wolverine. Wolverine is a go-to guy to do anything. Because mm. he's the best there is at what he does, and what he and does he isn't very specif- pleasant. He never specifies what that is exactly. It could be this, doing here. He that could is, be doing kills. That is the big. That's the big. Um, this, that's the big clause in the in the. In I the for one would read a comic <laughs> arc about Wolverine starting a cooking show. I'm the best at what I do, and it is Cajun. Adamantium lifestyles, mm-hmm. cooking with everyone's favorite mutant. I, I love it. I love mm-hmm. it. He could bring out his own line of cutlery. Mm-hmm. It looks like the attorney at comics has disappeared for a small little business conference. So we can we can chuckle along smartly. Mm-hmm. We can chuckle along smartly. We can chuckle along smartly. So, but I don't see anything wrong with like the Fantastic Four. I mean, all all other teams at some point or another have changed roster. But, uh, but you must Fantastic... understand. That, well, not cross you, Fabian. Continue. But just that whole the character of Fantastic Four being the first family, you can't mess with that. Otherwise, they're no longer the first family. So we're the second family. Wait, wait, but why can't why can't families evolve and change? But no, this thing, they could be a modern family. family. But this is nope. about the thing. The thing about it, right? The Avengers and to me, the Fantastic Four have had the most evolution during their runs. That any their rosters have changed continuously. Well, Avengers in particular. But no, but no we, one knows what to do with the Avengers. I think that's the problem. Who Nobody are, knows what who to are do they with avenging? Avengers. They don't avenge nobody. Mm-hmm. Who, who, can, also, who sound gives them that name? You should call uh, them Avengers. Wasp. Wasp gave them that name. And go figure. And she's not oh. on the team, right? Nobody who avenged her. She's <laughs> on the team. She's back. She's back alive again. Mm-hmm. She's back alive again. Thank you, yeah. Recon. You, you hear that word? <laughs> back alive again. You mean back the fifth? This again. is the fifth time she's back alive. Mm-hmm. Back alive. Yeah. I've known she's like, like the, re, the re, uh, reunion concert. They always have it every year for Jean Grey. <laughs> and she always misses it. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but for me, the Fantastic Four have actually progressed a lot. And they have grown. Is you understand that it's not really a superhero book. It's more like a a family adventure series. It's not yeah. really a superhero Listen, book per se. If it's a comic, it's gonna be a superhero book. What man should tell me? Well, it is. This is um Archie. I'm reading. I mean, no, yeah. no, but it doesn't have to be it's a superhero. You. The fact is, is that they're always we're always about family, and it was always about the scientific exploration and adventuring more than actual superhero business. Of course, they'll do superhero stuff any once in a while. You know, mm-hmm. save the city, protect whatever, protect mm-hmm. Gotham, you know. Protect the, Gotham? Protect Gotham. And, and, you know. <laughs> the battle of the job. <laughs> the, battle, the battle of the coal. You know, all that usual stuff. Uh-huh. But first and foremost, it was always about the family. And that's what I loved about the book, really and truly. I think you know, the, I think the stir things that I think they should break up. I mean, like, really break up. I mean, like... They have done it, right? I mean, it. some friends should get divorced or whatever, have a big custody battle. I mean, it should really and, get... And like, Neymar, Neymar should be outside man. Outside man, you know, okay. my child. And no, 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 they never had nothing. Nothing never happened. Nothing never happened. But Neymar, boy, that's a sniper. He's always knocking on the door. <laughs> <laughs> my day in the background. <laughs> you by yourself? That's true. <laughs> you, you, the money is subtle at all. The money, the money, David, the subliminal message. The man said, "Listen, woman, I want to take now. Will yeah. you don't let that idiot man come with me? See, I own, no, I, own I own, I own seventy-five percent of the world. You can't no, see me standing what, here. What, what I love was the Illuminati, where he keep he plainly told Reed, you don't treat she good.' Yeah, and I, and I, um, with, I'm with them more on that, but at the same time, I don't want. He's no better. Is he? Is isn't he really? You know. Is he is he really no better? Is he woman? Can you, know, you not you see know, me stand up here? You might see shell on the wear and you see, see you see you see people like wanna and the misunderstood characters like Namor <laughs> and Doctor Doom. You want Namor and Doctor Doom as friends, you know, because they there's friends they ain't gonna lead you wrong. If you're doing shit, they can tell you you're doing shit. Um, I'm sure this is a family show. Oh, I'm sorry. 
if you're doing garbage. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mm. We're gonna put a disclaimer when we, when we post this here. You mean edit? You gotta put, you, <laughs> just put, put any disclaimer to why I'm attached to it. I'm not family friendly. I'm, I'm sorry. Mm. If I had wing dings, that would be it'd probably be better. Mm. What was the next, what was the next, um, next one, though? No wing dings in love. The women. Okay, um, what that's right. Thing? It's just the boys here now. We getting we getting down and gritty. Down and gritty, you understand? Sure, we gotta ask the boys, right? Let me take the topic of sexiness. Oh, the sexiness. <laughs> how the sexiness has to do with the the evolution of superheroism? Because my fine feathered bald attorney, you see. I are not even touching this subject. You know, I'm gonna touch it. Though. I'm gonna touch it. All right. You, you when you look up. at the evolution of women <laughs> and how they've been portrayed, it also reflects where society currently stands on the topic. We mm. have gone from ultra conservative to totally out there and out of control to reining it back in to all of a sudden once again stepping outside the bounds again, but not. In the extreme 90s way, but more so reflecting a society that isn't afraid of sex. It's not afraid of sexiness. They're embracing that and finding that to be not a tool of shame, not something to slut shame a character, but something that a female character can embrace and use to her benefit, can embrace and enjoy, can embrace and recognize that it's part of womanhood. Embracing sex right. also as a part of marriage and a part of relationships. Try, try. So that's why I'm talking about the sex. You, know, you mean how, you I mean know you're yeah, trying to derail me, right? But I'm ready for you, Mr. Dumera. No, no, no. But no, no. No, explain Starfire. Mm-hmm. Explain her sex. You want me to explain? You want me to explain? Well, well, firstly, it's explain quite her luscious. Evolution it's quite luscious. Uh, I, I imagine in my mind, grape flavored. Yeah, that's what comes to my mind too. I yeah, great. Yeah. What, what were your words? What were your words? You think Star Wars is right? I ain't about this. I ain't in this. <laughs> you about this life, fella? Don't do it. What if I touch it up? Right, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. You want me to talk about Power Girl? Oh, no. Uh, oh, you want, you want, you want <laughs> that's, me to talk about Power Girl? Girl. I, 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 think, I think you may or have had comments about the Power Girl character already, so. Not to mention at that time that Power Girl character was my woman. I think I think she was a, she's a good and wholesome character, and I think all women wholesome should look indeed, up to. wholesome indeed. She should be seen as a a, a, a a plateau that all women should reach for. Simon, mm-hmm. Simon, there's something that you full of, but I can't say it because Seth <laughs> Bami. But you real full of it though. So why you don't why you don't just cast that aside and let me get real? I I tell you what I being real. I think all women should reach for that that that. You know, all she's women. Just showing, all, she she's is. showing an example. Why? For for what she represents. What does she represent? You know, um, truth, justice, and the American way. <laughs> I really want us to move this to be important. And if you uh, if you think Asia about it, uh huh. If you yeah. think about it, yeah, I have quite on the mark with that statement. I know you're trying to be clever, so tell me, tell me more about this American way that she represents. You know, all these things that women should strive for. You know, be uplifting and wholesome and um, uplifting and buoyant, and 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 and, 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 uh-huh. and as you said, be buoyant and and and. And 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 full of vigor. You sound it. You sound kind of thirsty, Simon. You want some liquid bread? Nah, I get. <laughs> you want glass? I get. Thirst. Can we move ha- on? Thirst to make you half dead, you know. Can we move on? No. Why are you afraid? Why do? Why should we move on? There's 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 more. What? What? Fabian hasn't had his say. Wait, wait, <laughs> wait. Why do we have to move on? Does anyone else want to move on? <laughs> okay, good. I didn't hear. I didn't hear. So we okay. can, we can get back to you. Okay, uh, and, to okay, you. guys. Now we will start to um to close it down. <laughs> any last any last thoughts on um the evolution of uh, superheroes as we know it? And I of, I of believe their, of their methods and motives and 
I believe that I believe that when it comes when it comes to sex and the female character, I like the direction that we're going. I like that writers are beginning to no longer fear sex in all of its forms and and manners of play. I like I like the fact that writers are not afraid, but they're not just grabbing onto sex and running away with it in only one form, a la the nineties. We all remember the Invisible Woman's outfit. I do like the fact that comics are taking a more modern tone. I'm happy to see the direction that they're going in. It would be interesting in seeing if they continue to move in that paradigm if we had a world-changing event. But let's not wish for anything bad. And I'm looking forward to seeing where our indie comics are going to go and where they're going to take it because i think that is where the true evolution is being seen not any mainstream stuff but in the indie stuff simon uh, simon mm-hmm. starting off with sex and women that you don't want to touch and then moving on closing words um starting off with that w- that will that will not be named What's um coitus a man a woman in force <laughs> sexuality sexiness i think as it's male form have... breast uh, can I continue no i don't know you tell me <laughs> can can i finish no thank you the thirst is uh, i think that um right now in comics there's just uh-huh. this it's no longer black and white it's no longer we just expect our heroes to be wholesome and good Racing we comics, want them to that's be flawed. We, uh-huh. we want them to be flawed, and we want them to to be relatable to our everyday lives. So they have been added some gray areas to the mix now. Our heroes are not just good guys fighting against bad guys. It's no heroes that are burdened with responsibilities and 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 life and 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 choices and decisions and responsibilities that they realize that. Are, are are very weighty and cannot be just taken lightly. You know, it's harder to just, in this world, to just say, okay, well, you know, let's save this person or let's stop this crime or let's, you know, just, you know, as it was before. Now you have to think of the consequences of your actions. You know, is it really good? Are you really stopping a crime? What's the, what's the, what's the things that's um, preventative stuff be, behind what they're, why they're doing the crime? You know? And all these things that we that are, are being pushed at us to make the comics more relatable to us every day, and I think that's pretty interesting. In some ways it works, some ways it doesn't, uh, but it's, a, it's it's interesting. All right, Fan of Steel. Um, well, I don't think comics have changed that much in regards to the era that they're in. They're a reflection of the era. I mean, originally, you know, uh, we didn't have female characters, female superheroes. We didn't have characters that were black because of, in the time, you know, that was unacceptable. We didn't have homosexual characters, obviously, because they weren't acceptable back then. But as society changed, comics kind of, like, lagged behind. But now I think they're on par with where society is in terms of not only reflecting the the atmosphere of what's going on now currently, but also is still offering a kind of escapism with the over the top fantasy with all these superheroics. And I kinda of like like how characters in general have evolved. They've become multifaceted. Heroes are not all not holistically good and villains are not holistically bad. Um they're all of the gray areas in between there, but you still have fundamental good versus evil, but then there's the ethical and moral dilemmas in it and addressing of social issues and acknowledging the changing of the tide bringing in diversity and all that sort of stuff so i'm really liking where comics have gone to a point now where it's not <clears throat> sorry it's not just about superheroes it's moved beyond that and still has you know taken that a step further and we're taking characters now so i'm, I'm all for it Steph, any closing okay. before I give the closing line? Um, I think superheroism has taken the natural um, steps forward that we all expect to 
society has um, changed um, our our perspective of life has changed and what we read and what we what we watch is is a reflection of that there's nothing much that we could do we could only expect to get um, more of those jaw jaw dropping moments and we could expect to see more pushing of the envelope um, the characters themselves um, I could I just hope that we could be come to a point that we get rid of this notion that we are just doing it for the money and we could do this for the love of it and just give each character did not show death and move on to something else and I mean like don't let us live ourselves to our this book should be named um, this name should be named Spider-Man forever maybe give it a different name you know be, be more creative we don't want to know that I guess people will feel safe knowing that there's one superhero um, swinging around or flying around saving them every time they get in trouble or whatever but then at the end of the day is is that really what we want to read? Uh, on a side note, um, what kind of villains that we live that live in these world and these in these places in Metropolis, um, New York, um, Gotham, whatever it is, that they will know that somebody like Superman be behind them, some like Thor will be there, and they will still rob banks and do criminal acts. Are these people mad. This is what it's called. <laughs> crim- this is what it's called criminally insane. <laughs> Anyway, and that's all I have to say. Okay, well, the closing line then. We're only footprints in the sand, ladies and gentlemen. And though temporary in presence, to remember what is forgotten in fleeting elegance, it's a sort of new heights on Icarus wings. I'm Castadroy. We've got the fan of steel, the attorney at comics, and just words. This has been the evolution of superhuman. We'll carry on the conversation in the ether. I'm signing out. Until then, stay safe, stay blessed, and bring back Peter Parker's awesome powers. <laughs> I'm gone. Windings. Yes, I bring me windings. Yeah, that's. Thank you, thank you. And we're derailed 21 times, ladies and gentlemen. Feel free to let me know if I'm wrong on that number. <laughs>